Hello and welcome to Real Menopause Talk. My guest today is Claire Hattrick. Claire is mother to twin girls who are fully grown, accomplished adults in their own right now. She's previously worked in the car industry and as a beauty therapist and now is a deeply passionate campaigner and menopause advocate. Claire's story is extraordinary. She takes us through the lack of joy that so many of us have felt and yet would not describe as depression, more a void and sense of retreating inwards, as well as insomnia, many other symptoms. But the most extraordinary of all is her extreme, and I mean extreme, joint pain. In this episode, she shares her nine and a half year experience of pain, eventual diagnosis of menopause and recovery. Well, Claire, it is lovely to meet you or re-meet you. It was amazing to meet you at the rally for World Menopause Day. That was really terrific. So now we get to see each other and have a proper conversation. It's lovely to see you, Hattie, as well. How about you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your life and family? So uh, my name is Claire Hattrick, aka clipboardclaire.com. Nicole, where do I start? So I suppose from a business perspective, I have been, or through lockdown, I was an out-of-work beauty therapist. I'm a single mum to identical twin daughters. Abby's a biochemist and Beth is a London paramedic. It really was Beth who came back, managed to get back from London, had a blood test at St George's, I think, and came back and sort of, it reminded me when the girls were really young, there was paperwork everywhere and laptops and, and things like that. And they basically said to me, Mum, we're so sick of you, seeing you rocking in pain with your joint issues with menopause, which I'm sure we'll cover. And it was really then that we decided to launch clipboardclair.com. Um, that launched July, uh, yeah, July 2020 and just took off. It was just absolutely mad. I was invited relatively quickly to host some rooms uh, for a social media app called Clubhouse quite American based, but I met lots of obstetricians, OBGYNs, and a kind of a wealth of, unbeknown to me at the time, but a wealth of experience in the menopause world, nutritionists, you know, private medical doctors, med- menopause doctors and things. And then after that, I met a lady who wanted to get rid of a menopause Facebook group. She had about four or 5,000 people on there and we've grown that to 10. So I kind of took that on. Again, uh, we were working round the clock seven days a week trying to get all our blogs up onto our free website just to help and inform and help people. Then I realised very quickly there was a massive gap in the market for a very simple menopause help book. So I went back to my girls, even though they've got full time jobs, I said, we need to write a book. They went, mum, we can't take anything else on. (laughs) So I then, five months and one day, I launched my menopause help before, during and after book. It was really written for men and businesses, but as well as informing women at a younger age, because I felt that it's always too little, too late. I've lost 10 years of my life to joint issues, which I'm sure we'll cover in a minute. And it just made me think that women in their mid 30s, they're not going to go out and buy a three or 400 page book and read through it. Why would you when Mm -hmm. you're at that age thinking, well, nothing's going to happen till I'm in my 50s. So I just wanted something you could put down the side of the microwave and literally just pick up on an as and when basis. And, and obviously, I've, as you realise, I'm part of the Make Menopause Matter campaign and menopause mandate. So we're, you know, really sort of championing hard to get change. And, and you know, we're now getting menopause taught to 15, 16 year old kids in school. So, you know, we need to educate everybody on it. And we're hoping to get our books into schools as well as the workplace. So we kind of did that and then it just grew and grew. And then I was approached by quite a few sort of national media. Um, I've been on Sky News a few times talking about the HRT shortages. And it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger, really. And then I was asked by a couple of people in the workplace if I'd be willing to go in and talk about my experience, why I set up Clip Bowl Claire, how we did it. So I ended up going in and that's when I found my passion was talking to people, men as well as women. Um, we put quite a few of our books in Hampshire Police. So I went down there to hand the books over and none of the men wanted to come over and talk. So I decided to sort of go over and talk to them and sort of said, so 
you never had sex again then, would it never bother you? Suddenly, all the ears prick up, and they all came over and talked. And, and it was very interesting. They asked some really good questions. And they were saying, oh, my goodness, you know, my wife's had tinnitus. And I don't think she's put, you know, two and two together that this could be menopause related. And there's a funny story, actually, on the end of that, because they all said, well, you know, we all work shifts. And I said, well, we so we designed a poster that's got our QR code on. So wherever you are in the world, 24-7, night and day, 365 days of the year, you can get onto clipboardclare.com and it's got a wealth of free, relatively short reads on on each of our, our main 34 or 35 symptoms, even though you and I know there's probably nearer 70. So that was kind of, that's my journey with Clipboard Claire. The girls have been absolutely amazing. We just actually won a local award. I got the community champion for the Pride of Andover Awards, which was lovely because I knew nothing about it. A lot of GPs voted for me and registered online for me and some friends and neighbours. So that was really lovely. That was a bit of a surprise. But my journey was one of, I'd come out of a relationship after about six years and I thought, you know what it's like at the time, you, you put a lot of things down to I was stressed out. Mm-hmm. I have my youngest twin going off to university. Uh, she was born with kidney failure. And that all reared its ugly head just before she was going off to uni. So I had an awful lot of stress going on in my life. And literally just before we'd split up, I thought I'd rolled onto my fingers in the middle of the night. I could, so I can virtually tell you the day, date and time that, you know, 15, 14 years ago in June, I remember frantically trying to fumble my way into the bathroom and running my hands under a, you know, under a hot tap thinking, my goodness, I've just dislocated my fingers. And that was the start of my menopause hell, to be honest with you. Within about six months, I couldn't carry a handbag. I had to walk with my arms kind of folded. I couldn't walk with them straight. The pain went very quickly from my hands into my elbows and then into my knees and then my hips. How old were you at that point, Claire? I was about I was about 43, 44. So definitely, you know, I was really struggling to walk. I stopped leaving the house because I was really struggling to get down into the car. When I got somewhere, I couldn't get out the other side. And I talk now very openly about my mental health. And, you know, I, I remember in the mix of all of this going on over a five, six year period, I stopped sleeping. I used to sleep against the door frame thinking it was my asthma playing up. Well, I was having panic attacks all night. Literally, the minute I went to bed, I would start having awful panic attacks. And I didn't tell anybody. I just thought it was because of this nasty relationship breakup. And I was just stressed and it was mild asthma. So, you know, I had a, she was an okay GP, but obviously she wasn't jammed up on menopause. At one point, I was under about 11 consultants for fibromyalgia, arthritis, Lyme's disease, tennis elbow, knee specialist, hip specialist. And such a waste of, of money with the NHS. Mm-hmm. And literally, everybody just kept saying, you know, I mean, today I've had 1,307 blood tests. Good Lord. Um, and everybody just kept saying, nothing wrong with you. Now, I'm quite a, a keen gym bunny. I've always gone since I was 18. And when I look back now, it was only forcing myself to try and, and limp to the gym that that really kept my mental health going. You know, I've been the person at the top of the car park I didn't think I felt depressed, but I just didn't have any enjoyment in life. I just was thinking, I don't leave the house. I don't see anybody. I felt very, very lonely and, and very, very isolated. So, uh, you know, my, my beauty work was really hard, you know, trying to wax people's legs and bikini lines and do nails and things. You know, I just used to sit on the stairs in between clients rocking in, you know, a scale of one to 10 call an ambulance. I'd be at an 11 at some point. You know, I would hold my breath literally till I was passing out to get rid of the pain. It was that bad. Never had a hot flush. My my friends say to me, you must have got hot at night. And I went, I remember a few years ago, I thought it was a bit sweaty under the boobs. And I took the top off, wiped under my boobs and kind of threw up my top on the floor to wash. And they went just the once. And ironically, as a kid, I was always the child outside in a white pair of knickers with nothing else on. And But now I get very, very cold. Like my daughter is a paramedic. She went, oh, mum, I'm sure you've got Raynards. I haven't. But my hands are always like blocks of ice. Yeah, I've always been a really warm morsel, but never, ever had any any hot flushes or night sweats. In a nutshell, Hattie, that's kind of what drives me on to go into the workplace. And, and I just think if it saves one woman's life, I mean, I've had a few messages now from men who have said, one, their wife 
committed suicide at 42 and the other was 49. And they both said to me, Kerb, we've been stalking you on Instagram. We've, we've gone through your site. And without a doubt, my wife was all the things that you said you are, didn't want to go out, didn't, I, I wouldn't have said I was depressed. I just, you know, I didn't laugh anymore. I couldn't remember the last time I really belly laughed. And, you know, I'd go out with friends and all I'd want to do is go back home. And I am the life and soul of the party. But I feel quite angry that I've lost nine and a half years of my life to this. My, not my light bulb moment, but all the consultants, all the specialists were all guiding me back to a physio. And it all really came to a head about three years ago when I'd, I'd limp in to see Dave at my local hospital and, and he jokingly said, oh, here it comes, lift one drag one. What's wrong with you this week? I mean, I was seeing him twice a week, which is unheard of on the NHS. You get six sessions and that's it. But he said, I've got so many consultants sending you back to me. And I'd worked really, really hard in my salon. It was the 22nd of December. I, was, it, I wasn't even exhausted. I don't even know. I don't remember leaving the home and driving to the hospital. I was that tired because I wasn't sleeping and I was in pain. And I remember just looking at him and I think, I think the whole nine and a bit years had just come to a head. And I just looked at him and I said, am I terminally ill? Am, am I dying? And the tears came, the snot, the makeup was running down. I don't think he knew how to kind of cope with a, a blubbing wreck of a woman. And he, he sort of spanned his laptop at me, went, oh my goodness, no. You know, hat trick, 46. All that he said, everybody I've got in today, you're all ladies. He showed me all their surnames. And he said, you're all between the ages of 40 and I think 62. And he went, you're all in with joint issues. He went, this is systemic and literally frog marched me across to my GP. I changed my GP. And I mean, even walking across the road with him, I was literally crawling on my hands and he's holding on to the glass siding door. And he went, you can't even walk. He said, Claire, we've walked three minutes and you're literally on your knees upright but on your knees trying to he went you're not leaving it till they sort you out this is hormonal then I, I saw a different GP I think they realized that everybody and the doctors kind of looked at me and he went we're not leaving I want to know who is your you know who's your hormone who's your because he didn't ever say menopause but he said who is your hormone specialist and they said they had a new relatively new GP and she was an ex-army doctor she's now a very good friend of mine and she happened to float past within this bit of a commotion that was going on that, that my physio was causing and she just said uh, I'll see you tomorrow in my lunch hour so I went we had probably about two hours she didn't pick up her next patient she just went I don't even know where to start we, she said we saw you I think twice in 15 16 years yeah, you've kind of got your own parking space outside now. You're, and I, she just said, you haven't come for your last few appointments. And I just shrugged my shoulders and said, what's the point? There's nothing wrong with me. Everyone. And she said, well, blatantly there is because you're really, you're rocking. You're really struggling to sit on that rock hard seat, aren't you? I said, I need to stand up. So I, I slumped against the door and spoke to her for literally two hours, wandered about a bit every now and again. And yeah. She sort of got me to see the right people, put me on a very high dose of anti-inflammatories, which actually, after taking one tablet, I would never have carried a hot drink for you and given it to you because you'd have been wearing it. I was very clumsy, which I've never been, covered in massive bruises. And again, this should have been picked up that bruising in menopause is rife. I mean, I've got a bruise. If I didn't have trousers on now, I'd show you. It is literally, it's, you know, a massive handprint. And literally, I just walked. I didn't realize my daughter, who was back, happened to pull the dishwasher down slightly. And I backed up into it. Now, anybody else would not have a big deal. That I have to sit on the floor because I think I'm going to faint. Goodness. What went off in Dave's mind to think it was hormonal? Well, every week I was in there with right hip, right knee, left elbow. The next week, it would be left wrist, left knee, right knee. And every week there was something that was different. He said, I don't think you've ever been in here and said, both knees, both hips, you know, left elbow, left knee, left hip. It's always something different. He, he said, it's moving about. He said, it's everything is joint related. And often you find that wrists and ankles, I don't seem to start, uh, suffer too badly, but my hands are really painful. So my current state of play, I, I've spent, my poor mother has spent thousands on high street supplements. My advice, don't waste your money. Good quality supplements. They have helped, but I'm now on a little bit of HRT. I'm six months. I'm 
quite happy to share. I'm having a bit of a post-menopause bleed with the old eutrogestion, which seems to be half the course. So I think I'll end up being sent a bit of a pain, but I think I'll end up having to have a transvaginal scan just because my doctor is, is ticking the boxes. But I know why it is, because for uh, the best part of 14 years, I've had no oestrogen. They, they did send me for research. I've been part of um, some trials for some unis, and I'm quite happy to donate blood. And they've said that my GP sent some old blood tests, and they've said, literally, you should have been fluctuating with your oestrogen. We can't find any oestrogen in any of your blood tests for many years. It's as though your your oestrogen just bottomed out overnight. And they also think that there is a link. Um, I know Tim Spector does a lot of research with twins. And of course, I've got the twins, not the only one. And they think now that there could be a, a link, could be between women who have multiple births and early horrendous menopause. Gosh, how fascinating. Very, very early days. I'm, I'll be watching in the next five to 10 years. And so it's it's all of this that makes me think, Blind me, I've lost nine and a half years of my life. I'm never going to get that back. So I'm sure as hell going to get out there and, and scream and shout about menopause as much as I can. Absolutely. What was your GP's initial reaction over the two hours that you spent together in her lunch hour? She talks now a bit more openly. And obviously, it's not, it's not, it's not relevant to have a GP bash. It doesn't achieve anything mm -hmm. because they're not trained. I mean, obviously, you know, with all the campaigning that we're doing, yep. you know, we're trying mm -hmm. to get GPs to, you know, I think by 2024, anyone that goes through med school will have mandatory compulsory menopause training. My GPs quite often, not the surgeries, will refer people to me because I know more about it than they often do. But I think for her, it was why did nobody, all the consultants were based between three hospitals, did nobody think it was worth? And she said, normally, if you've got a, you know, a, a difficult patient, you would speak to others. And she said, there's just pages and pages of but she said, I'm going to have to take it home and go all the way back through it. But, you know, pages of I've been here, I've been here, I've had sensory nerve testing, I've gone to specialist hospitals, this, 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 you know, it just is such a waste of money. Mm -hmm. Really, as we all know, the only thing you can do is, is replace those hormones, try HRT. There's obviously ladies that don't want to take HRT. And it's got to be, it's down to informed choices. I feel very passionately that don't write HRT off. You know, we, we've had this this scaremongering back in 2002 with the, you know, it was obese women between 62 and 65. You wouldn't really be taking it at that age. You should start taking it in your 40s, really before any massive symptoms come into play, which obviously, as you know, Hattie, is sort of the, the latest research is showing more, is gearing towards start taking it before you really hit these, you know, there's so many of us. I, I hear it daily from women emailing me, I'm 47. My GP says I'm nowhere near menopause age. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just want to scream. I'm, I'm receiving emails morning, noon and night from people who, you know, we're still a long way away from, from getting menopause out there. I keep thinking we are making such progress because I come across the areas in which we have made progress. But you're right, out in the wider world, it's the same as has happened to so many of us. You're too young, even at 46, 47. Nobody knows what to do with you. The lack of joy isn't regarded as a symptom. If it is, it's depression, which when you're going through it yourself, you know it's not depression. But having no joy, not laughing at anything at all, isn't... It, it is a symptom. It's just not recognised. And it isn't a way that any of us should need to live our lives. I don't think we talk about it. Like I don't think I would have said to anybody, you know, I'm just not getting any joy out of life. I don't think I, I was in such a bad place in my joints. I don't think I knew the words and the sentences to almost string together to say, well, I've got this issue. At night, my asthma plays up every night. So I stand and I lean and I sleep against the door frame. If I'd remotely thought that all these different issues were were together I might have said to my GP look I've got this going on this 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 and they would have gone whoa you know let, let's write these down let's go through it I mean I'm massive on symptom trackers I say yep. to people now get on clipboard clear and get yourself some menopause trackers because then when you go into maybe a, a GP that isn't particularly you know gemmed up on menopause one it says menopause tracker on the top you'd like to think there will be a light bulb moment for them you know gauge your sleep gauge your erratic periods but I'd never had, I, I used to use a handful of tampons. I was every four weeks, flick through the calendar, little start, do on about then. Never had any gyne issues, nothing. And then people say, what about your family? 
my mum was always outside with very little on having hot flashes. I've never had one. My sister, horrendous periods every every month, migraines from the age of about 11 or 12. She's virtually walked menopause without any issues. She has, I do remind her that she has been blue lighted to the hospital twice with heart palpitation. She went, that was years ago. And I went, hmm, perimenopause, Julie. She went, oh, yeah. And so again, it's this, we need to be educated. We need people to say, these are the main 34, 35 symptoms. Be aware, just be aware that this could be menopause. I'm not saying everything is menopause, but when you have the things going on that I did, it is a ticking box exercise where somebody should have gone, hold on, she's not sleeping. She looks like death. I'd lost a lot of weight because I was so stressed out. Anxiety was off the Richter scale, but I self-diagnosed that. So I was taking inhaler and of course it wasn't working because it wasn't, it wasn't asthma. What else are you doing to look after yourself? Again, I, I, I say to people constantly, it is a lifestyle change with my 10 and a half thousand group on my, my menopause help Facebook group. It's self-help is massive. And you have to be a little bit hard, you know, the same people asking the same questions. So we all know alcohol and cigarettes and smoking and, and eating processed food. All those things will exacerbate your menopause symptoms without a doubt. You know, a, a couple of nights ago, I had a ready meal because uh, world menopause, it's been absolutely mad. And I paid for that all night. Definitely gut health. I take a really good probiotic that that settles. I, I don't mind sharing this. I used to bread a fart from the top of the stairs all the way to the bottom, no smell, but I never really, nobody ever talks to you about your gut health. And mm -hmm. I take this gut works now and never had a problem since, but I was like that for years. Diarrhea, constipation, diarrhea, const again, all these things are linked to menopause, but I wouldn't have thought that. I just thought I was stressed out. So, you know, I was sort of running to the loo every 10 minutes. So I massively, you know, I, I always say to people, eat what you want, but eat within reason. I'm keenly watching the glucose goddess with the old sugar spikes, with the old weight around the middle. And, you know, I, I think some really interesting research is now being done into women's, you know, midriff and, and midlife weight gain. You'll always find me in the gym four or five mornings a week. I'm there early doors. If I don't go sitting at home doing podcasts, writing, I'm doing some commissioning for a paper at the moment on menopause. So, you know, I need to get up and move. And so, yeah, lifestyle, it's look at, you know, have that drink. I don't think people should have to necessarily go tea. We need some things. But I say to my friends, we don't need a whole bottle, do you? Just have half a bottle of red wine, you know, just cut down. And then your hot flushes might not be quite so bad. Again, green space, blue space for your mental health. Exercise, as we know, bless her, Davina McCall massive on on exercise we don't all have hours in the day to do it but find that 10 minutes to you know to belt around the block where you live and and it's so good for your mind I always say to people if you're down and I know I've been there with the can't be bothered I'm just going to sit here I've done all that but get the airpods in whack up some 80s music whatever your genre is and get out there you you do come back I, I walk in the rain and you look outside and you think oh it's horrible but you, when you come back, you feel so much better. It is absolutely essential for mental health as much as the physical benefits, I think, as well, particularly at this time of life. And if that is just walking, that is as good as it gets for many people. Walking is so underestimated, particularly in fresh space, fresh air, if you've got it, green space. Uh, just clear your head of the to-do list as well. Women are so thrown into deal with it yourself and I just I'm so passionate that you know we we say to our younger female generation this this could happen we're going to give you worst case it's not because people said oh you know you, you don't want to be scaremongering but if I'd have only known I wouldn't have lost nine and a half years to my life I'd have been going oh well I'm suffering with this 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 and well, I wonder if it could be my hormones so I've been looking at one of your daughters, the paramedic, thinking she must be very clued up, obviously. Is she aware around her patients and anyone coming into her ambulance? Yeah, I'm going to make you laugh now. My girls, I mean, bearing in mind they were 22 when we started this and they do turn around and they go, Mum, we know more about vaginal dryness than we should ever know. It. You know, they're now 24. So, <laughs> And I do think it does, you know, Beth does say she goes to lots of women heart palpitation she said oh they think they're dying but you know and, and she does mention clipboard case she said you know have you seen your gp do you think this could be hormonal and 
you know, I think it's it's really good awareness for the girls. And I've, I do say to them, you're reading the absolute worst of everything. And that's my passion. But nobody should get as bad as I've got. What would be the one thing that menopause has taught you? Education and information. Absolutely all day long. If we educate our kids, they realise why. And, and husbands, they often say to me, you know, we've got a testosterone fueled son, daughter starting her period, and my wife's turned into a psycho. So if we all understand and we all realise, oh, you know, mum's now 40, whatever, 42, 47, 59, whatever. Oh, yeah, mum's going through, you know, menopause. Yeah, I think everybody would just be so more accepting of it and in the workplace. And, you know, men need to know the amount of people that say, oh, I, I don't, you know, covering their ears. I don't need to know about it till my wife goes through it. But that's what we're trying to avoid. We don't want her to suddenly not want to go out. Oh, let's go out for dinner, darling. No, I don't want to go. I want to stay in. And. I mean, I've got friends that said, if only I knew this, you know, I might not have got divorced. Because men are as sexually fueled as they've always been because they lose less than 2% of their testosterone in their 20s and 30s or 30s and 40s. So they're just still hopping around and, and wanting sex morning, noon and night. And women couldn't think of anything worse. All they want is one, a good night's sleep. Two, you know, they're often suffering with vaginal dryness and things like that. And that's another thing I'm massive on. You know, I'm a single lady. And my GP said to me a year ago, she said, you need some localized estrogen. Don't get dried up. You don't want lichen sclerosis. You know, and you just sort of think, I wouldn't have known anything about it. And why are our older women having UTIs, prolapses? You know, our, our women in their 70s and 80s, and they're obviously a lot, you know, they're not as outspoken as our area is, and they don't want to go and get it sorted. And I now think how much of that is down to, you know, vaginal dryness, vaginal atrophy, because they've been left to suffer and kind of suck it up buttercup. And it's, <laughs> it's shocking. So anybody listening, get that localized estrogen twice a week, little tablet, pop it up inside your vagina. You should be all right for the rest of your life. So education and information, Hattie, if you know about it, you know what you're dealing with. Lovely. Well, the thanks part. ever so much for your time, Claire. Thank you. We really appreciate your support and keep doing all the good work you're doing because it's it's just invaluable. Take care. All right. Thanks, Hattie. Thank thanks, Mona. Bye. Take care. Bye. You can find Claire at clipboardclaire.com, on Facebook, on Instagram, both as clipboardclaire.com, on Twitter, clipboardclaire with a three instead of the E at the end, and on LinkedIn as Claire Hattrick. As usual, I will put all the details in the show notes. Follow us on the podcast app of your choice, hit subscribe, and please leave a review as it helps others discover us. You can also subscribe to our newsletter by visiting the website realmenopausetalk.com, scroll down and hit subscribe. Thank you for listening. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. 